Hi and welcome to the video. My name is Simo, a Notion Certified Consultant and Ambassador. Notion has recently released more powerful automations. Automations were launched earlier this year and were pretty simplistic. And right now, there have been some few updates that make automations in Notion significantly more powerful than before. So, in this video, I'm exploring the new features in automations looking at how we can set variables dynamically, how we can use automations in databases as well as in buttons, and how we can make the most out of this feature. Okay, here is a template that is called 24 assets. It's also available on the template gallery in Notion. Notion has also launched a marketplace, so that's a renaming or rebranding of the template gallery, where people can also set up paid templates, which was the case also before, but now also payments are managed by Notion itself. And as a creator, we can also lock the distribution of templates when a duplication happens or after a duplication happens. And this is slowly rolling out to all the creators out there in the Notion marketplace. So in this template, we're going to look at automations. And automations are a way to set up a workflow that happens automatically when a trigger happens. So automations are composed of triggers and actions. There can be one trigger and one action, or there could be multiple triggers, for example, using AND conditions or using OR conditions. And there could also be multiple actions happening when the triggers are met. So let's go into a database, for example, DLs in here and look at automations in this database. Because I already set up one when I created this database, I set up an automation that sets the close date of a deal to today, meaning the current day, whenever the status is changed to closed one. So on this deal, when I move it to closed one, then the close date changes to today, as you can see here. So that's a pretty simple automation right there. It makes sense. And let's add an additional layer to it, meaning let's create an automation that whenever I close a deal, automatically creates a project in the project database. And it also carries over some of the properties of that deal. So for that, we can use the same automation because the trigger is the same. So I'm gonna edit it. You can see here, this is a new design of the automation layout that it opens up in the center of the screen and it is bigger than before because it used to be a small square or rectangle on the right hand side of the screen but right now there is more real estate here just like before we can select where we want to trigger this automation from if it is the entire database or specific views in that database that are pre-filtered and you can see that formulas are not supported yet for triggers. For example, here, create this quarter is not supported because there is a filter based on a formula and that is not supported in automations yet for triggers. So in here, the trigger is when status is set to closed one or closed lost. So in this case, I'm going to create a separate automation because I only want this to happen when the status is closed one. So let's add a new one. When a deal status is closed one, create a project. That's for all pages in deals. The trigger will be status set to closed one, done. If I want to set multiple conditions for the trigger, I can go here and I can do all or any. If I do all, this is an end operator, meaning that all the conditions need to be met. So for example, if I want to, to trigger this automation only when the status is set to closed one and when the owner is a user, then I would do this. And then both conditions need to be met for this automation to actually start. If instead I wanted to set the condition to be OR, meaning either the status is closed one or the owner contains this user, then I would select any. So that when the trigger starts, it looks at the status. If it is closed one, 
it continues right away without looking at the second condition or the third one or the fourth one or however many conditions are there. Let's delete that one. And now let's go into the actions. A new feature available in the action is variables. Variables are ways to define a value in an action that I can then reuse on multiple steps below it. And before actually setting up variables, let's look at the other available actions. This edit properties, this allows us to edit the properties in the same database that we are triggering the automation from. That was also available before. So same thing. Then there is add page to. This allows us to add a page to a database. Edit pages in. This allows us to edit specific pages in a database, any database in the Notion workspace. Send notification to. Here we can define who we want to notify, either specific people that we can select manually in here, or it could be a person property. For example, if I want to notify the owner whenever something happens. And that notification happens in Notion, so on the inbox, on the left-hand side of our menu. And if that person has, in his personal settings, also email notifications turned on, then they will also receive an email from Notion. And this is new. You can send emails to a specific email address. So when you select this one, you can then select the account that you need to connect. So if it's the first time that you set up this option, then you need to connect the Gmail account. This will open a pop-up menu like this. You connect your account and then you can set the message body. You can set the subject, the recipient, and you can also dynamically set those values if you use variables, which we're going to see in a minute. You can also send Slack notifications to specific people or channels and define variables. So in this case, let's define some variables. I'm going to select this. You can see also a new feature is that you can collapse and expand each step in the automation panel which is very useful for real estate management, especially when you set up automations that have many steps. For example, if you have a product that has repeating tasks or default tasks that need to happen whenever you create that kind of project, then each step can be collapsed for easy management of spacing. The first variable that I want to set in here is the name of the deal, because I want to carry that over to the project creation. And I define it as a variable because for example, in the future, if I want to add an additional step after creating a project, for example, I can reuse that variable easily. So in here, I'm going to rename the variable to name. And then I will do edit as formula. And now you can see that this is the formula editor, just like in any formula property in a database. But here, I'm using a formula in the automation editor. So this opens up a whole new set of possibilities because now I can set any dynamic value either from the trigger page or from any text that I want to add dynamically, for example. In this case, I want to set the trigger page dot name. So that's the string that I want to see in this variable. Now, before setting all the variables needed, uh, let's check what we have in the project database and see what properties we might benefit from dynamically passing through the project. So I'm going to add an action, add page to, select a database. This is going to be the project database in 24 assets. I will create it as a product that is a template that's applied. So that there is a nice layout on the page of that project. Then I will populate the name. So in the name, I'm going to populate it. I can either type text in here, but that's not dynamic. That's why I want to use something more dynamic that takes the data directly from the trigger so that when the project is created, I don't have to change the name. So in this case, I'm going to do a formula. And in the formula, I'm going to pass the name variable. Save. So in here, we are passing the variable that we defined above in this step of the project creation. So that's going to be dynamic by nature. If I wanted to, I can also set the formula here directly on this field. So on the property name 
that is in the product database. So that, that will be the same thing, same exact formula as before. The only downside of this is that if I want to add additional actions afterwards, then every time I need to rewrite that same formula. Whereas if I use a variable, then I can reuse that same variable on any step that I want afterwards. So that's why variables are very useful. And they are a general concept in programming in general, using variables so that we can reference them many times. And if we need to make a change to a variable, that is a formula, for example, in a notion automation, we can just change the formula at the variable level once, and that will then propagate across all the references of that variable. So that's why a variable is very handy. So I'm going to set that variable here. Let's see what other properties we have. I know that, for example, I could set the owner as the DL owner. So for that, let's set a variable here. I'm going to call it owner. And I'm going to pass that value directly here. Now let's go one step further. Let's say I know that on average, a project for a DL might last about two months in this sample use case. So I want to set those dates dynamically. And for that, you can see also on dates, I can write a formula. So for this, let's add a variable for the start date. I'm going to edit the formula. And I know that the start date will be in two days. Let's say always we want to start two days after a DL is closed one. And of course, an arbitrary number, it will vary based on your business, your freelance projects or personal projects or whatever you have. So in here, we're going to do date trigger dot date add. We're going to do two days. And I know that oftentimes you want to skip weekends for this use case. I'm not complicating things, but we could set up a formula that actually skips weekends and only starts on a Monday if the start date happens to be on a Sunday. In this case, let's keep it simple like this. So I'm going to do a custom formula for the dates. And I will do first start date dot date range. This allows me to set a range, so a start date and an end date. Otherwise, we will only get the start date of the project. So I'm going to do date range. And then inside, I'm going to put the end date. And the end date will be start date dot date end. I'm going to do two months. OK, now we have a date range right there. Let's see if there is any other property that I want to pre-populate. In here, suddenly we want to pre-populate deal with the trigger page so that the project will be dynamically linked to the deal that triggered the automation. And nothing else for now. So let's collapse this. If I wanted to, I can also add additional steps. In this example, I will not. So let's create this. Now let's go here. I'm going to open this deal. You can see right now there is no project in here. I will change the status to close one. And two things should happen because there are two automations set up for this trigger. The first one is the close date, which is right here. And the second one, is the project, which is right here. And I can see it has the same DL name. And if I open it, I can then see the status. I can see the owner. That's the same owner from the deal. The dates today until two months from now. The deal is dynamically linked. And that's about it. These are all the properties that we pre-populated from the automation steps. You can see the template was automatically applied. So when I open the page, I can see all the actions on here.
the content and all of these other sections. To go one step further, I will also automate the creation of some default tasks whenever the project is created. To do that, I will go into the project database, set an automation that triggers whenever a new page is added to this database. And then maybe, let's say we have different kinds of projects and I have a property that tells me what project type is it. Is it, for example, a ongoing service or is it a one-time custom project? Is it a full custom build or maybe just consultation? So for this kind of use cases, I might have different tasks. And if that's the case, then I could set a trigger for not page added in that case, but property edited. That would be the type set to, for example, consultation. Then I would set all the actions that I have. And then for the actions, I would use the add page to action. And I would add pages to the task database that is called actions in here. And then I could do the same exact things that we did before. So same principles apply. I can add an action that is define the variables first. I'm going to move it up and then define all the variables that I need to pass onto each task within each action. And then I can also click on the three dots and then duplicate below just like that. And I can create as many actions as I want. For now, I'm going to discard this one. And these are all the principles to know about automations in Notion. Keep in mind that automations can also be used on buttons. So, for example, in the project database, I can also add a property. The type will be button. And when there is this property type, then I can edit the automation. And then same exact principles apply. You can see here the actions. There is no email action supported yet in here, as you can see, but all the other actions apply. So same principles. The only difference is that the trigger is not a specific update, but it is the click of the button. So that is useful to know. And also keep in mind that you can also open a page or a URL. But if I want, I can set variables that are dynamic, of course, using a formula. Buttons are not just in database properties, but you can also create buttons on pages. So if I do slash button, then I can see the same layout as before. And that's it for this video. These are Notion automations at the end of 2024, with a few powerful additions. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below. You will find links to relevant documentation in the description of the video. For now, I appreciate you for watching and see you soon.